Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Fresh Friday. I hope you've had a great first week of February. We are one month closer to having a little bit more diverse group of vegetables coming to us in CSAs and farmers markets and that kind of thing. I know people are a little bit tired of winter squashes and hearty greens, but we can still cook with them. And actually this week we are going to be using broccoli. So yes, in some parts of the state, you can still get broccoli. Those farmers that are using their high tunnels or greenhouses are producing some really nice broccoli that in my opinion tastes better than what you can get at Kroger or the bird's eye steamed ones you can get in the frozer section. So I'm excited. We're gonna be making broccoli the way that I make it when I can get it fresh. So I roast mine in the oven with a little bit of garlic and I'll show you that in a minute. And then we're also gonna be making a broccoli and potato tater tot. Now these are a lot better for you than just an all potato deep fried tater tot. And as delicious as those are, and as much of a connoisseur of Chick-fil-A french fries as I am, these don't taste like those. So just forewarn you on that. These are really flavorful, and I really think that um, if you market these to kids the right way with like a nice little dipping sauce, and we're gonna use some cookie cutters to make some shapes in them. If you do it like that, you can really get kids interested, and this is kind of a nice way to hide it. Now granted, they are green, they're not very hidden, but you can kind of sneak some vegetables in and experiment with this as much as you want. You could do carrots, you could do spinach, you could do all these things. So I'm just saying, open your mind, give this a try. I use an air fryer today, or you can use an oven and it really gets them nice and crisp. So I'm excited to show you those. We are going to talk a little bit about Bar Farms. So an hour ago, we posted about them. They're located near Louisville, Kentucky, and they service three different, typically, three different farmers markets in Louisville, just two during COVID. Um, they deliver their CSAs. They, like I said, do restaurants. They have chicken, cattle. They have over 40 varieties of vegetables. And they're, I believe, a seventh generation farm. They've really been um, substantial in taking care of their soil. It's really meant a lot to them to um, incorporate composting and cover crops and biochar to really return the nutrients and stabilize the soil. So it's nice to um, see people that are caring so much about their land and are trying to produce the best product for you all that they can. So if you're interested in a CSA and you're located close to Louisville, there are a ton of pickup locations. Like I said, if you don't want to do a CSA just yet, they have um, farmer's markets that they go to. So just look on their website and we included that an hour ago in our post as well. So let's get started cooking. To get us started, so I have a head of broccoli here and we're going to use a sharp knife to carve around the stem. So just be careful for your fingers. We're gonna put the stem to the side and you can use a carrot peeler to get all of the rough bits off and then slice and add it with the rest of the broccoli. But I'm just gonna show you the florets today. So we're going to make sure we don't have any large pieces, cut these into manageable bite-sized pieces, and then we're gonna put them onto the side on a parchment-lined baking sheet. Next, we are going to mince up some garlic. So I really like garlic. Typically, I would do about three or four cloves minced up, but for today, I'm just gonna show you two cloves that I just sliced through, minced, and then I added it onto the broccoli. We're also gonna add a pinch of salt and pepper, and then I added red pepper flakes just because I like a little bit of spice to mine. I'm also gonna give this a nice drizzle of olive oil and then mix it all together, making sure all of the broccoli florets are covered in a nice coating. And then we're gonna pop this in the oven at 400 for about 20 minutes. You're not looking to burn the garlic, but you wanna get a nice little crust on the broccoli like this. So I typically would leave this in just a little bit longer because I like mine almost burned, but that is completely your preference. For the long awaited broccoli potato tater tots, so we are going to start by mixing up our dry ingredients. So I have some panko breadcrumbs here, salt, pepper, some red pepper flakes. I did a little bit of cayenne pepper, some paprika, some garlic powder and onion powder, and then just gave this a nice little mix around. I'm also going to add in some cheese. Now typically I would do Parmesan, but I have some Asiago here that's shredded. We're also going to add in, if you have it, a little bit of parsley. Now I had some pretty sad excuse for parsley. 
and I just threw a little bit in there um, and realized I didn't have enough. So if you do have some, that will add some nice freshness. And then we're going to add in our broccoli. This is roughly chopped. You don't want any big pieces, but you also don't want this minced. Now, if you're using something like um, the food chain package of broccoli that we got a couple weeks ago, that would be perfect. This is already pre-cooked. You don't want any raw broccoli. So if you have fresh broccoli, you want to steam it or um, some frozen, just like the one from Food Chain. That's what I'm using. We're going to add in a boiled potato that we took the skin off and it's pretty tender. There is a little bit of give in the middle, but you want to either shred it with a grater or break it up with a fork. I find that using like a potato masher on this mixture really can help, um, but I did mix this with my hands and just made sure to break up any of the big bits. And then you can shape these up into whatever you would like. I used a heart-shaped cookie cutter since Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And then you're going to add these into an air fryer at 350 for 10 minutes. Or you can do it in the oven for the, about the same. You won't get the same kind of crisp, but just look to make sure that they are done all the way. I plated these up with a little bit of green goddess aioli, but you could do whatever sauce you'd like. These are really, really good. Like I said, they are no substitute for Chick-fil-A fries, but they are much better for you. I hope you guys give these a try and join the local food challenge. Make sure that you tag hashtag KHC local for your chance to win $25. I hope you all have a good week. See you next week.